You're now tuned into Mike Check Waifu Waifu! Check, my check, waifu, waifu. Tell y'all know, is that you? It might be. I, I just got here. This is episode 124 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. As always, it's brought to you by Lou Complex. Make sure you go to lucomplex.com. Use that offer code Waifu to save on your entire cart. Spooky Complex just launched. Make sure you check out Spooky Complex. Go to lucomplex.com. Use that offer code Waifu. Spooky Complex is legit. They also got a uh, a um. A collaboration with Fake Nerd. Check them out there. You can use Waifu again to save on your entire car. Also brought to you by DontTalkShop.com as well as our lovely, lovely, the most important Patreon producers, AB Aaron Brown, Dre the Go G, Ked the Pro, follow Chaotic Culture Podcast at explicitly, follow it at explicitly, Monique Williams and Nachi. Nachi never gave me an update on how you doing, so I'm still waiting for that, Nachi. Thank y'all so much for pr- producing this and many, 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 many other episodes of the podcast. We appreciate y'all so very much. Oh boy, this is going to be a great episode tonight. Always is, right? Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk about the fact that since the day we're recording this is on Halloween, we have a nice special song for you, Paralyzed by Teflon Sega. So look forward to that. What in the world? Somebody calling you? No, nah, that's a new engine outside. Somebody's engine outside was something like that? Yeah, I think he got like that V8 Raptor. Um, Sheesh. That th- was that, is that a Chevy, the, the Raptor? It's, it's, a, it's the big, big, like super lifted heavy duty truck. Bro, that reminds me of a story. Okay. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, this story is actually going to happen. <laughs> so, so, where I live in Houston. It's on a, like um just about on the main road. It's on a main road. Okay, I'm on I'm on I'm on the main road. This main road has the loudest fucking cars go through it every night at about midnight. People with them loud ass motorcycles they come mm-hmm. through roaring. But that's not it. That's not it. That's not the whole story. Every weekend, Friday through Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you already know where I'm going to. It's right. this fucking bar across the street that has a live band, and I swear to God, <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, it's the loudest shit ever. They sound like they're in my house playing. Like it's that loud. It's ridiculous. They sitting there with the on the, the boom boom, yeah, the boom, boom, boom. Right, <laughs> right in Polo House. Like, what's up, Polo? You taking a shower? <laughs> <laughs> You're this loud as a acoustic guitar. I'm like, why the fuck is an acoustic? Th- the guitar riot like ringing my whole house it's fucking crazy i hate it and they're like four it's literally a four lane main street so right. it's eight lanes and it's coming all the way across here oh my god damn turn that shit off through the cars though yeah exactly <laughs> motherfuckers <laughs> got the nerve to be going literally until two o'clock in the morning man it's, it fucking kills me that's man. when the bars get ready to close exactly i'm like man come on that's a, it's enough it you gotta get with the Houston nightlife, bro. Nah, hell no, because it's country music. I ain't fucking with country music. I am not. Hey, hey, I, I nah, am not giving country you. music to my worst enemy. I swear to God. One hundred percent. Fuck country. That is not my thing at all. But um, yeah, this is anime podcast. I promise. Um, brought to you every week, every Tuesday morning at nine thirty a.m. EST. You can do us a favor on your iTunes or Google Podcast, wherever you listen to our podcast. Make sure you go rate it. If you have an iPhone, but use a third party app to listen to podcasts go to over to itunes podcast app and just rate the podcast we would greatly appreciate it that means a lot um also follow our uh our twitter at mike check waifu and our instagram at mike check waifu waifu um what else what else uh you can support us at patreon.com slash mike check waifu waifu and uh fucking uh shout out to y'all listen I, i don't know what we've done me neither. But our listens have been absolutely through the roof. I don't know if we went viral or something like that. The the episode one twenty one, 
it never happened for some reason it just became our most popular episodes and it's literally been stacking on the growth so i just want to say on the behalf of montel and me and lee and everybody that rocks with my check wife waifu podcast thank you so much for listening absolutely insane growth uh we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep making it better for you um and i'm looking forward to doing that <sighs> all right let's get this anime thing crack and tell first and foremost bro what was your episode of the week or show of the week this I, week I, I, I ain't had one huh i didn't have one yes you did don't lie to me yeah it was 86 <laughs> I'm not even gonna hold y'all. It's 86 for me too. First of all, bro, <laughs> come the fuck on. <laughs> Actual fuck, dude. I was sitting at my desk with goosebumps, bro. Fucking goosebumps. The entire so, episode. First of all, I'm getting goosebumps I, thinking about it. Holy I, shit! I don't wanna, I'm not gonna go too into detail because we're gonna talk about it later. But as soon as I felt that, that I felt the music. I ain't just hear it. I felt that music kick in. I was like, listen. Why they fucking with me like that? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing me like this? This is too good. Way, way too good. I was, my fucking mind. <laughs> I was blown. <laughs> jaw, uh, my jaw was on the floor the entire episode. Listen, <laughs> <clears throat> fuck what you heard. Eighty six is the greatest anime this this year. For sure, it's for sure. no fucking question. Not even close. Not even close. To be honest, we, um, we was heavy on on Vivi at, at the beginning. Yes, yes. eighty six. It's like wrong. <laughs> like these loud ass cars, right? Gone. <laughs> Gone. Listen, it's man, and the people that get to binge it, I'm so happy for you because I, I'm a I'm gonna be real though. I think watching it week to week has been better. Yeah, I think. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna say watching it week to week is, has changed its performance, in my opinion, because I think it'll still be good. But it's not giving us shitty cliffhangers like Platinum Man. Yeah, it's not even that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not even the, the cliffhangers I'm necessarily worried about. It's that I think I need a break between episodes. It's too impactful. It's Hit too hard, too much. Too impactful. It's like Game of Thrones. When Game of Thrones was first popping off, like I was glad to wait a week to figure out what was going on next because it was just, it was a sensory overload of just fucking emotion. This episode, when it was over, I'm like, because it, it had an after credit scene. I don't know if you saw it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm like, fucking thank God it's yeah, over. Of course. But I can't wait for more. But I'm like, fuck, I'm so glad this is over. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. Uh, All right. Real quick, just just because you said something about Game of Thrones, uh, that that first season of Game of Thrones, it took me like three times to watch. Mm -hmm, I remember, but but that final episode, bro, of of season one, mm -hmm. I was like, I gotta watch it. Yep. I gotta watch it. You're welcome. <laughs> I yeah yeah. I was actually just talking about just how I enjoyed the entire thing, even though most people didn't enjoy the final season. Final season was I, ass. Yeah, I agree. There was a lot of issues there but i think as someone who came in late and didn't have to wait all that time yes. for that final season i enjoyed it more than people who had to wait understand because um, i started the month or month before that final season started coming out i i just really did you did you ever watch an episode of burn notice oh i no. Okay, i'm watching okay. i'm watching the first two episodes like you said yeah. i'm watching just the give first it two episodes just give it to. That's all I need. Only for you to see exactly how <laughs> <laughs> the world's finest assassin this this is, dude. Like they literally, I swear to God, this Arthur or whoever wrote this shit watched Burn Notice. They had to because everything they do is almost identical. It's identical, like a copy and paste. It's almost, almost but, bro. But yeah, I swear to God, world. yeah, it's crazy as fuck. It's wild as shit. That's why I just need you to watch those first two, and then you, then you might even be hooked, like I was. Also, he got um. Michael Weston, which is the main character of Burn Notice name, he had a suit in one of the episodes that made me want uh to wear what I wore during my prom because yeah. of that suit. It was it was the it was the black suit with the the red shirt and the red tie. I'm like, oh yeah, I need that. That shit looks fucking fire. It was when he was playing this us. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it. He was playing like this villain type character. Let me see your shirt, bro. Fucking oh, what you talking about my, my Lou Complex shirt? LouComplex.com slash Oh, not slash. Just LouComplex.com using the offer code waifu. Yeah, this one's fire. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to see. I was like, 
That's dope. Super okay, dope. but yeah, continue. It's an anime podcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No barn notice talk. Sorry. That was my favorite TV show of all time. <laughs> it's it's, I'm gonna watch it. I can't. Wait. I, I I believe in your recommendations. I do. I literally can't wait to see what you think of those. Just those first two. That's all. That's all you needed. Um, we did have a question on Twitter. Uh, we normally ask for questions when we want questions, but it's from Rob J. Rob J can ask whatever he want on the podcast. Uh. Rob J says, question for Mike Check, Waifu Waifu. Since y'all are both in the same city now, are there any plans to record in person at some point? Uh, short answer, yes. We definitely want to do that. Long answer, Tell still lives an hour away. Tell still has two kids in a... Can I share that? Let me know. Yeah, you can say I got two kids. I don't mind saying I got two kids. Okay, and two kids, and... A pregnant wife. And a, yes. Okay, I was making sure I wanted you to say it, not me. <laughs> and a pregnant wife. <laughs> so at any moment now, they can, you know, they can pop the third. So we just, we're chilling for right now. I still don't have any other furniture in my house other than my desk. So that's also a problem. And if we do it, it'll have to be here because I got the mic set up. I also have another mic that we could mm-hmm. use too. So, um, hold on. I just thought about it. This Go XLR only has one XLR port. Oh, I still got my other mixer. Never mind. We're good. I still got another mixer that has four mic ports. So we we can still do it in person. It's gonna happen eventually. Eventually. We just gotta set up set up the right time. It's got you know everything gotta align right. Right. And the main issue with that is like I said, besides his family obligations, he also lives an hour away and we always record on Sunday nights at around ten or eleven PM. So it, it would have to be like we make sure we get everything watched and we get together at like three or four or something. Yeah, exactly. Which would be weird as fuck because anime comes out on Sunday, don't drop until like four. So we had to be like six or seven or something. Like yeah, that. A something later, like that. Right a little there, bit later, but, but we we gonna we gonna work it out. We gonna work it out. I think that'll be a dope episode. Yeah, it's gonna be a dope episode to be in person. It's gonna be some wild <laughs> shit. Um, I can't wait for that. But this main episode today is here to discuss the midway point of fall 2021 crazy ass season crazy ass season legit a really good season of anime would you not agree no i 100 percent agree slept on already 100 percent slept on um there have been shows that we've watched let's start off with shows that didn't quite make our the top seven i ended up making for us Mm, okay so Um, and let's try to stay away from the ones that are in each other's list. So for instance, like I got tell here, looking at some of this list, some of your must watches that didn't quite make the list. All right. Uh, Miruku Chan, Demon Slayer, Banished from the House Heroes Party. You don't have to uh, talk about that one because that's in my list. So I'm, I'm going to talk about that. De- uh, I already said Demon Slayer, Digimon Ghost Game. Talk to me about those three. Miruku Chan first. Um, Miracle Chan. Oh, that's what I think is just it's just a, a nice slice of life that is horror oriented. Um, basically, all it really is is she's living her life and being haunted by ghosts. She gets herself in different scenarios with different ghosts, meets different people. Um, and you kind of learn about her aura, her best friend's aura, that kind of stuff. Uh, really, is it's if you like etchy because it's very etchy influenced because it's interesting. It's, it's heavy, etchy influence, but it's also super, like, supernatural. And uh, I fuck with supernatural stuff. It, I've always been supernatural. Uh, like, like I like that kind of stuff. Horror movies, all that stuff. Yeah, but you don't so, consider it a must-watch, right? Um, I would not say it's a must-watch because it's not going to be for everybody. I don't think it's that cup of tea. And obviously, all anime ain't for everybody. Of course. But this one is going to be a little bit more on that, like, niche spectrum. Copy that. Uh... <laughs> Let's talk about Bill Divide. No, don't watch it. <laughs> Listen, okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar, we do have uh, an episode of, of a podcast that kind of have me and Tell pick sleepers, shows that we think that are going to excel our expectations that nobody is talking about. Tell pick Bill Divide. Now, I'm not going to hold you. First episode, I'm like, oh, this shit is looking real good so far. <clears throat> But then we are in four episodes in now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, me out. Okay. I'm listening. This is my statement. You got on the Versace, wait a minute. You got on the Versace shirt. 
<laughs> it's not Versace. Oh, I was about to say, damn, <laughs> damn okay. Let me hold some, bro. I'm, I'm not record. I'm not gonna record a Versace shirt. That's how. That's how bad Bill Divide is. He thought this shirt was Versace. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Divide was so bad. Polo thought I had to come up that quick. It was just like Taylor wearing a sixteen hundred dollars shirt in the middle of a podcast. Let's go. I can't breathe. Let's go. Bill Divide is that trash, bro. Oh God. Uh, but no, this is my Bill Divide statement. <clears throat> Gotta clear my throat. Since red flags are so important right now, just know. Oh, they trending. When the intro is the best part of the anime mm. six red flags tell them six more red flags tell them and then six more red flags because that's just the mark of the beast what's six what's six times three 24 um there it is no it's not i'm joking oh but i i let you do it because you <laughs> you always been the math dude so i'm like fuck it i'm, I'm gonna go with it don't don't do that don't it's 18 guys don't expose us for bad math here we i was just joking um <laughs> <laughs> but no, Bull Divide is actually hot garbage. Oh it's, 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 it's bad, bro. It's so bad. Mm. The anime intro is like a really cool between like this, this like J pop, like fast upbeat to like this slow switch. And you're just like, yo, this is hard. And then it goes into the anime and you're like, no, turn this off. <laughs> turn, turn this off right now. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's something. Um, so build like I said, first episode started off good. I'm like, oh, this shit interesting. Then out of fucking nowhere, every character in this show became the most uninteresting thing I think I've seen in a very long time. And even the card game shit just happens. I have no fucking idea what's going on. Like they explained the rules in the first episode ridiculously badly, but it was like, okay, I can kind of follow it. But then every fight, every card battle after that, completely like you. Un, unintelligible. You can't even read what the fuck it is. Like you don't even know what the fuck is going on. It shit yeah, just pops up and uh, high key. Just like what he said, they, it just pop up. They have like four monsters on the field in the first turn. And I'll be like, Yo, what, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know that's not how these card games work. <laughs> when the fuck? That's did, not- <laughs> when the fuck did you draw? Hello? <laughs> did we deal? <laughs> what happened? It just, it just shit just happens, and I'm like, Yo. they, they say, they say, build a device, <laughs> and then. It's just five monsters on the field all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on here? I it's confusing. It's un like I said, uninteresting. The main story is just baffling. I'm not even go- we're not gonna spend much some more time on it. It's don't watch Build of Thanks. Demon Slayer. Okay. I chose Demon Slayer on a like not necessarily a must watch. Mm-hmm. Um because at this point, if you haven't seen the movie, then I'm gonna say it's a must watch. If you have seen the movie, you can skip this like for right now until it gets to the the real shit. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think that I mean, there's this. It's not that much different right now. It, it literally you. feels just like the movie. And Monique and I just watched the movie, mm-hmm. and she was like, "It was really good." She didn't cry like some of the other people' girlfriends did, but you know, she was like, "That was, that was really good." <laughs> she she did not fuck with Rengoku though. She thought he was irritating as soon as he said "tasty." Oh. She was like, nope, not fucking with it. Yeah. Also, the dub, dub isn't as bad as I thought it was. Inosuke's voice is the worst thing to ever exist, though. I think Tanjiro's is still... Yo, know, Inosuke is worse than Tanjiro's. Not in dub. Not in dub. And, and, he sound like he sound like a like an Ed Ed Nettie character. But. Yeah, it does sound stupid. It just don't match him. Like, I know that voice actor from other dubs that I've watched, and he's good. But it just don't work for his character at all. <laughs> And I just keep thinking, like, he knows, K, when he take his helmet off, like his, his mask off, mm-hmm. is he going to keep that same horrible, hideous voice when he got that pretty ass girly face? Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't rock with it. I can't rock with it. Like, yeah. And I'm not trying to judge, but bro, like, they could have done him better. They could have gave him like a darker, more sinister voice. And mm-hmm. that would have been like perfect. But they gave him this goofy ass like voice. I'm just like, that's horrible. Super, super bad. Yeah, he don't um, sound like that in the in the sub. <laughs> <laughs> no, he don't. And uh, lastly, but not least, Digimon Ghost fuck uh, Ghost Game. Uh, so this didn't quite make it on my must watch, um, but it is still it's kind of interesting, but it's not good. Mm. Mm. It's it's interesting because it's a new take on Digimon, where basically the holograms that the world has created. Uh, they kind of manifest in real life, obviously, because they're holograms. But people are mistaking Digimon for holograms. 
Mm. And it's kind of like a, a, they call them ghosts, but they're really just Digimon infiltrating the world and doing Digimon shit. Gotcha. Uh, sweet. For mines, there is there is a list. Now, this is really tough for me because my list is fucking fire. And uh, I feel like I feel like these should definitely be some that you watch. But I'm, I, I kind of limited it to the to the specific things that I like that I know. Not everybody would like, right? So, for instance, Comey Can't Communicate. I think this is a fucking great comedy if you like Slice of Life. If you like Slice of Life, what a f- fucking fantastic comedy that I feel like um, a lot of people like. And Comey, again, cutest anime character this fall to ever, did you ever see? She's gorgeous. Um, and very well drawn. And like I said, artwork does look beautiful. Yeah, very, very beautiful and very, very sweet. I, I love, I love what it is, as far as the story is concerned. Um, of course, it's about a girl who obviously can't communicate. We talked about it on a previous episode, so go back and listen to that episode if you want to know more about it. But good show. Another one that didn't quite make my list that I think also should is the Fruit of Evolution. Um, it's called the full title is the Fruit of Evolution. Before I knew it, my life had made it, and whatever the fuck that means. But okay. it, it's about this guy whose entire classroom gets transported to a, another world. It's an isekai. They get mm-hmm. transported to this another world, and this dude that gets transported, he's the last one to be transported, and he's like always bullied. He's f- literally fat. Um, think of the main character of, of Excel World. So if y'all know what Excel World is, it's he's he looks like almost like him, a bigger a bigger guy who isn't quite popular, but he get he gets transported last with uh, a couple of special abilities. Obviously, when he gets to the new world, he comes across these uh, this group of monkeys that are that is like super high level monkeys. And they're eating this. Fr- they're collecting this fruit for their boss. Um, they collect this fruit and he, he's like he's wandering around this forest because he's starving. He's a fat kid. Um, he sees the fruit. The monkeys run away because they hear some noise or something like that. And he eats the fruit, the fruit of evolution. Then literally evolves his entire body to, to be stronger, cooler, and more attractive, essentially. So as he goes on, he levels up and he and he and he kind of goes through this world. But the overarching story is a it's a comedy that has these fucking funny bits that are just hilarious. Um I think this show is definitely worth watching if you like comedies, but again, it's not for everybody because it is an isekai that I do think still have some interesting storytelling beats to it. So I do think it's worth watching. Um, but just not a must watch this season for sure. Uh, also on my list of not quite must watches, but good shows nonetheless would be uh, Arena, the Vampire Cosmonaut. That's a really decent romance um, slice of life esque supernatural joint. Um, I'm liking it so far. I missed this lady this episode. I uh, just wasn't wasn't clamoring to watch it but i do think it's good it's about this astronaut uh this it's about world world two no world world one russia i think is that when the, the space race started between world War one and world War two yeah i believe it's between those yeah so between those it's about that time and the russian no, government. i think it was it was probably that it was, or it was either that or the cold war yeah one or two whichever one it was it's about the Russian quote unquote empire um, trying to send the first human to space. They're essentially competing, obviously, with all the other nations to do so. And the way they're doing it is they obviously have some historical references, like when Russia sent the dog to space. That said, that lasted a long time, even though it really didn't. Um, <laughs> uh, but they they are testing out how humans would do now by sending a vampire because vampires in this world are literally they're secondhand citizens. And they're not the vampires you typically know of. So they don't drink blood. And they don't do like vampire y shit, but they're just a different form of people. So they're trying to send this vampire, and she's training with this guy that got demoted to, uh, from a cosmonaut to basically an instructor. And romance is going to eventually ensue, supposedly. So good, good show. But those are not must watches. You don't have to watch them. I do think they are good. Uh, make sure you follow our adding list. The link will be in the show notes and see what we're watching because it's all there. Like everything that we're watching is there. Uh, all right. tell so now to start the real 2021 fall must watch list, starting with number one. Uh, 
The number one must watch for the for the fall season. Yes, eighty six. Yes, that's both of our number ones. Um, obviously, we just talked about what this most recent episode did to us. This is literally the best show of this year. Period. Twenty twenty one. Period. Um, extravagant writing, beautiful aesthetics, some of the best CGI I've ever seen done. That has like the mixed anime th- uh, CGI mixed into it. Gorgeous. The mech, the mech motion doesn't make you sick. Fucking gorgeous. Yes, you can still see everything that's going on on the screen. The story, though, the writing, unbelievable the way they do the storytelling. Mm-hmm. Super unique. So even though it's a mecha, even though we both are not fans of mecha, me so more than tell, I think this is literally the best anime this year. I can't recommend it enough. You would Easily never, best anime this year. <laughs> you would never see us not recommending this, by the way. All right. Uh, tell you want to go with your number two? Talk to me. Sakugan. Uh, Sakugan is another like semi mech anime. Like, there's some mech stuff in it, but it's really not heavy on the mech. Um, animation is not as good as 86, but the storytelling so far just seems really like the world is very interesting. Seems very interesting. Um, they're in a, a situation where it's kind of like made in abyss, where mm-hmm. they are in kind of like this world where it's limited and they can't go to the full extent of it. Mm-hmm. But the difference is that it's like kind of like the reverse. They're not going into the abyss. They're in the earth. And they're trying to make it out. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, the main the main thing with this is like the father daughter relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and me being a dad probably kind of has a little bit of tie on my heartstrings there. But uh, in general, it's just like an interesting show. You kind of want to know more about like what's going on in the world and the way it kind of approaches those scenarios. Mm. Um, so yeah, that would be my number two at the moment. Which is wild to me. I'm hoping it stays as good as it is. (laughs) Yo. (laughs) Sorry to interrupt. I just got a tweet from... (laughs) A tweet to the mic at Mike Check Waifu Twitter that says uh that's from Ked the Pro. He <laughs> says he says, Yo, 86, what the fuck? That shit got me stressed. Yeah. <laughs> For real, bro. Oh my god, yo. <laughs> oh no. this is that's funny. That is funny. Watch 86, man. It the tweets come on time, man. <laughs> on time. I just told him we read it on the show. That is fantastic, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 86 to do that to you. So Saku Gun is extremely interesting because it's the opposite of Made in Abyss. Instead of going down to the abyss, they're trying to come out of it. That is very intriguing to me. The 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 thing that shocked me about that is I'm like, wait a minute. That is what you went with with number two above world's finest assassin? We're gonna talk about uh, that. We're gonna talk about that in a little yeah. bit. But my number two is obviously world's finest assassin uh world's finest assassin is one of uh let's see out of all the isekais i watched this year in 2021 is it the best no but full dive full dive was hilarious absolutely right but no it wasn't it wasn't it still wasn't best because jobless reincarnation to me still is better um because of this storytelling and we're gonna get to that later but world's finest assassin is Again, a Burn Notice anime. Burn Notice being my favorite TV series of all time. This is right up there with it for sure. It's <laughs> just shit. So interesting. What he did with um with uh Tetra. Yes. Yes. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm I'm, I'm treading lightly. World's finest assassin, probably one of the best Isakaz you will watch. Watch it. Can't recommend it enough. Very, very different take on how it's telling the story because it's going through like growing up as a kid in the isekai so it's not like which mm. has been which has been commonplace lately huh yeah with like jobless reincarnation and far away paladin yeah far away paladin yeah, they, yeah. They, very interesting concept that's been changing the isekai genre on his head kind of uh but yeah i think i think this is definitely my number two this fall season specifically I think it deserves that spot. Yeah, because it's, it's it's just too fire. The writing's too fire. I can't wait to see where it's going to go, um, including all the brainwashing and whatnot. It's very interesting stuff. But was it really brainwashing, though? It was really, nah. It felt like she was just ready. She just was cool. Yeah, and I felt like he felt like 
he wanted to do that, like wanted her to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. So very interesting stuff, because if you remember the first episode, he talked about how he didn't need help. So now that you're getting it, but, but the guy did say, look for it. So this is a bit different. I guess right. a little bit different, a little bit different. Um, Tells number two, uh, number three, far away paladin. Yeah. So I, I really like, go I, ahead, go ahead. What you got to say? I was just about to say, I can't believe this was your number three. I really enjoy far away paladin. Um, again, I think it's really like the, the character relationships to me just feel better mm-hmm. than some others, right? Like, uh, we have some really cool character relationships in, uh, the world's finest assassin and whatnot. Great. Um, mom and dad I are think, phenomenal. Yeah. But I think that we get more direct emotional connections in far away paladin and kind of like just the story around those characters to me developing and how, how things get handled is just kind of just overall cool to me. Mm-hmm. And just that's, that's the kind of what would tie me in. So, uh, yeah, far away paladin for me is going to be my number three for the season. Yeah, uh, interesting stuff because I just don't think uh, this, and I'm going to be real with you, so just this my, well, this is what makes me and Tell so different, I guess, because we all, we do have a lot of similarities between our tastes, but this one, I don't think is that good. I think it's good, but something about, like, something about, especially this most fucking recent the C- episode. The CGI isn't that good. I, I, no, I don't even really care about that. Episode. I don't care about that. It's, it's This most recent episode fucking blew me. I'm like, this fucking, this evil dude, the way he's Acting like the evil dude literally fought um, uh, Gus, was fucking throwing down with Gus. But then when he's about to fight Will, he's sending his minions after him. And then all of a sudden, Will is about to accept his, his, his fucking shit. And like the battle changes and it's like, oh, no, it, it just it, it didn't feel like it didn't feel rewarding. It didn't feel like it belonged it just felt like it was something rushed through to kind of get through to where they wanted us to be with will and his uh i guess his growth in this particular episode i thought that shit was stupid i don't think the characters are really that interesting at all except for will i think will is very very much the, the backpack he's putting everybody in his backpack in this in this show because of the emotion the voice acting just his particular story individually is phenomenal the others i don't i don't give a fuck about them too much at all maybe except for marie because she's waifu but <laughs> of course <laughs> everything else is awful i'm like i don't give a fuck about this these people at all um but i am interested to see where it's gonna go so very different dynamic between me and you with this one number three you got that over world's finest assassins now it tells number four is world finest assassin so we just what, talked what's your what number three my number three was I just wanted to say what, what yours was was Final oh. Assassin. So my number three was Jabba's reincarnation. This shit was just probably the most beautiful show. Uh, yeah, is it? Yeah, I think it's more beautiful than more beautiful than <laughs> eighty six. I do. Really, I love the fucking art style. The art style it's, it, it gives me Grimgar type vibes, like a different look. And I like it. It's creative. I love that. Mm-hmm. Like that storybook. Some, sometimes look. it does give that really like painted look. Yeah, it's a super storybook esque kind of watercolor look to it. I love. Um, but I'm um, this, this most recent episode of Jobless Reincarnation. If eighty six didn't do what it did this week, Jobless Reincarnation would totally have that title because what just happened. Um, and what just happened had me like shit, man. He's right, you know. And I'm not gonna say who's right, but he's right. Like he shouldn't have been living the way he was living, even though he had no idea. Him, because I know he had no idea. He was a fucking kid, so maybe. I, yeah, I, I agree that he should have been living the way he was living. Because yeah, but the way they brought it to our attention, I was like, damn, you know, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't at all. Like it made me feel like a shitty human being. Like yeah, exactly, I was not even thinking about that. That's exactly where where I was going with that. That's exactly how I felt. I'm like, like I don't know if I don't think. Rudy was wrong, right? Like, I don't think he was wrong. He's Mm-mm. definitely right. But when you put it that way, fuck. Like, I mean, he, he's also a child that, I mean, he was yes. handing his father the hands, though, but he's yes. still a child, technically. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
that was interesting seeing that. But I, I, I just think the story is, is far, far and away too interesting to, to sleep on. I think if you watch them from beginning to end, you will be extremely uh, satisfied with what you're getting so far. But I think it's definitely worth to watch. So if you haven't watched Jobless Reincarnation, do that. Um, my number four, though. Uh, my number four is Platinum Men. <sighs> to be honest, the only reason why it got above Blue Period for me is because I know Blue Period is just not something that's going to be for everybody. So, yes, watch Platinum Men. It's it's okay, you know, it's okay. I'll say that. Is it great? No. No, I'm going to say it. I said it. Polo said it. Polo said it, not tell. I don't know how tell feels yet. We about to find out in a minute. But it's okay. And um, if you love Death Note, you will love this. Even though they're very different. Very fucking different. I still think Death Note was written a little bit better. But I don't know. Tell what you think. It's okay as fuck. It's okay as fuck. Yeah, okay. You can tell what he does. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I actually probably could have skipped this one in my whole, mm. if I'm being like real, like I, I could have waited until it's done. it was finished and then just watched whatever, how many episodes they gave us. Interesting. I, I could I could have waited until they finished the entire series and then bench on that in like two or three years. No, Damn. No offense to people who enjoy Platinum Man, but it's not, it's not, it's not given what y'all said it was supposed to give. Yeah. It's, I, remember <laughs> yeah, what I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to shade. I'm not trying to shade at all. Yeah. Like, Platinum Man is, it, it really is. It's like, okay, as fuck. Like it's, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. I'm not upset with watching it, but I guess what really pisses me off the most about it is the cliffhangers because like you mix in these cliffhangers where it's like, you could have just gave me that. And then like, Everything like that happened in this latest episode. Like I feel like they're trying to play checkers. Yes, but like they don't quite have the pieces there. They just they just playing. It is like this information, this story could have gone a lot faster, smoother. They yes. didn't play so many games around it. It's it's okay as fuck. You can watch it. Yeah, it's, it's not on, it's not on my must watch. Polo got it on his must watch. Yeah, because I feel like people should because they it's fall season and yeah it's. <clears throat> Mad fucking just okay. The Power Ranger things pissed me off. Everybody's just I'm like, come that's enough of this shit. I'm over it. I just I don't I began to not care slowly. Um But it's like I do think it could use some fashion. polish. Yeah, some polish. That's what it is. Like a few patches or some shit. <laughs> a show getting some patches. <laughs> a show getting some patches. Like a fucking like a like a a platinum man Kai or some shit like it just yeah. it needs it just needs something and I'm they've been in this stadium for too long it's been two episodes now they've been in the stadium for the entire time no real we still gonna be there next episode yeah no real progression like at all when it comes to like just anything really just the main uh, story focus I guess to, to me this felt like an opportunity to demonstrate more characters that they didn't capitalize yeah. on yeah. Um, well, they did demonstrate more characters, but they just took the motherfuckers out. Yes. Too too fast. But like, there there was just an opportunity to capitalize here, and I feel like that the they didn't they lowercased it. Yeah. So like it was it wasn't enough, and right. I, I I agree with those who say probably read it because this is hitting on a point where I'm like I could have read this and been done and been like okay I enjoyed that or been like okay yeah. I shouldn't have read that. I'd rather get this out out the way if I'm being honest. Uh, coincidentally enough, um, your number five is also why the fuck do I keep losing this list? Hold on, I got in text messages. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Job is reincarnated. Oh no, blue period. Okay, so blue period. <sighs> yeah, blue period. I, I think it's a must watch. I don't Absolute care if you like slice of life or not. Absolutely. Um, like I it's know both of, trying to. It's both of our number five, by the way. I, I only reason I put blue period here is because of like I agree with what Polo said. Like where people aren't going to want to watch it because of what it is. Mm-hmm. But realistically, blue period is just too good. 
to not watch, right? Like 100%. The, the emotional context and then like, yeah, the the artwork of the characters itself isn't immaculate, but when you take into context the look of what they're actually doing <sighs> and Listen. stuff like that, it's, it's immaculate. And if you are someone who's into the arts or anything like that, just like it makes me think about other types of art forms. Like this recent episode, he was looking at a cake and I'm not going to go too much detail until he's looking at the cake and the way the cake was, was laid out. It, it make it makes you think about how you apply that kind of information to other parts of life or art in general. Right. So just, you know, I think blue period is a must watch for sure. Absolutely um, agree. Over platinum in. Yeah. It's oh man. It's such an, it has such an emotional, attack like right like because you just you you feel if you uh, if you're an artist in any way don't matter if it's actual physically drawn art or fucking editing art like podcasts it don't matter what it is whatever art form you are uh associated with fucking playing video it doesn't matter whatever art form you're attached to that emotion that it draws out of you is all in this episode as an art like as an artist you can see somebody coming into themselves and just growing with that that main character phenomenal great main character i didn't like him at first who did we both not like him at first i think it was because he was kind of like that that cocky ish yeah yeah character or or cocky but still unknowing i guess yeah exactly very good though very good character at first i didn't like him i'm gonna be real um number six for polo is banished from a hero party I think this is definitely a must watch and it belongs on a must watch list because it is the most adorable slice of life show you will watch. Period. Before Polo and his statement, I would also like to say uh, I have redacted my current statement that I sent in his text messages and that banished from the heroes party is also my number six. Oh, hell, OK. <laughs> there it is. Let's go. OK. Yes. It's fucking adorable. I something about when relationships form in anime that feels more natural instead of that what is it what's the word i'm looking for side eye bullshit like uh, what's what's the word i'm actual word i'm looking for shy uh, shy bullshit yeah. <clears throat> i love how they're how she's like coming at him like this is where i want to be and he's like this is where you can be you know like it's just it's just like that it's no bullshit nothing else added nothing to figure out but Tell, but Montel, there's also a background story just playing, just just slowly kind of developing in the background. Every five minutes of an episode, every <laughs> the last five minutes of an episode is just a small piece of main story developing that you're like, oh shit, what's gonna happen when this happens? And it gets interesting. So is it gonna turn into something else completely? When we're gonna see him get active? Because I'm loving this, you know, quiet life basically he's living, and. It's it's an enjoyable show. Shout out to Panda for telling us to watch it, even though we've already been watching it. You know that yeah, means that means she don't listen to the podcast anymore. So that makes me it's sad. It's okay. We still love and we support st- you too. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's funny though. And then my number seven is Far Away Paladin. I do think it's good. I do think you should watch it. Uh, but I don't think it's just it's that that great. Um, my number seven is Platinum Man. I do think you should watch it. I do think it's good, but I just don't think it's, you know, that, that great. Mm, mm. All right. Like just copy and paste it. What Polo said. <laughs> word for word. So with that, that is our top seven anime that we feel like you should, mu- you should watch this season. It is incredible. It is something special. Um, definitely, definitely watch those shows. Please try to watch them. Just try to watch more than just Platinum Man because I promise you, you won't be disappointed in at least something else and at least anything else, like just anything else. But now is the time where we get to know my check wife, waifu. It's where one of us rolls a random number generator. The other reads a question associated with that random number generator. Generated, I should say. And we get to yes. know our host a little bit better. 61 questions, brother. Copy that. Number 14. Okay. What was your favorite video game as a child? And we're going to specify a child. Um, Specifically child. Before middle school. Ooh. Mm. Oh, 
shit. Before middle school, it'll be Zelda. Nope, I'm a liar. It's definitely SSX Tricky. It's tricky, 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 tricky. Hey, that's hey, that game was fun. Yes, yeah, that fun, that was bro. my very first PS2 game. And oh, was that middle school though? I think that might have been middle school. I think PS2 came out before middle school, bro. Okay, good. Yeah, that was my very first PS3 in high school. No, yeah, PS3 was in high school, right? Let's look. Let's look. Because I got it when PS2 launched. When did PS2 launch? <clears throat> 2000. Ooh, March 4th of yeah. 2000. Yeah, so that we were not in, in middle school yet. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I got it that December, though, for Christmas. Shout out to my Auntie Tanya for helping us get that. Let's go, Auntie. We love you. <laughs> for sure. Uh, oh, it, it came out in North America October 26th. So, yeah, that December. Yep. Crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff. SSX Tricky. It was when the disc was blue. But. Yeah, that was my that was my first one. Uh, my, my, my favorite, I mean. My favorite game as a child, it's hard to pick between the two. It would be between Pokemon and Twisted Metal. Yeah, yeah. Two, two very different games, but Twisted Metal, it just has so much replayability at that age, bro. Yeah. I really just turned on the game and blew cars up for hours. Yeah. It's a good time. It's a good time. <laughs> and then po- Pokemon, you know, I put a thousand hours into every Pokemon game. Honorable mention, uh, those U.S. Army game, like the, the toy soldier, toy soldier games. Bruh, we I, all played that. Yeah, I used to enjoy that shit too. I used to enjoy that shit too. All right, so now we're going to take this quick break to this Teflon Sega Paralyzed. Since it's since we're recording on Halloween, even though when y'all hear this is past Halloween, but it's just, it's thematic. So we're going to play it. So <laughs> when we come back, we're going to spoil 86. We're going to spoil Platinum Man. We're going to spoil probably Jobless Reincarnation. So make sure if you watch those three shows, because you have after you listen to this podcast episode, stick around. We'll be right back after this.
Let's do it. We kind of already did, so we won't spend too much time here. And I always say let's spoil Platinum Man first because we know it's what most of you motherfuckers are watching. So, yes. Why you got to say it like that? I know. I'm tripping. <laughs> Why you gotta say it like that? No, come on, bro. Listen, Look, don't turn off. Don't turn off the podcast because Polo's being evil and facetious and mean. Very facetious. Very very yeah. facetious. But I just need a hug. So uh, for everybody who's listening to the podcast, <laughs> share with a friend, and that's a hug for Polo. There it is. Uh, <laughs> share with a friend, and that's a hug for Polo. Um, yeah, Platinum Man. This episode was awful to me personally. I feel like they're trying to do too much. And it ain't working in my personal yeah. opinion. Like I, it's yeah. just Metro booming and uh, who the fuck? <laughs> Metro <laughs> booming and the Boom Squad. Yeah, and the Boom Squad, the Green folks, Green Ranger and the Yellow Ranger, and then all of a sudden the Pink Ranger and the Blue Ranger. It, it's getting fucking ridiculous. And apparently, it's him playing chess. But no, it's just it's just stupid. Nah, he was he was not playing chess. He was playing checkers without without enough pieces. <laughs> Yo. Chinese checkers, bro, <laughs> with the marbles and shit. It's not. It's not good. Uh, this episode wasn't good. I, I agree. It, and what would have made it good would have been pacing, right? Like they could have they could have made this better with pacing, giving us more information, making our main character seem a little bit more proactive. Um, our our main character just seems like a, a side show piece, yes. right? Like like he he's not the main character in this right now and that just seems off for a show like this right like could you imagine l and light not being the centerpiece of yeah. the show no like that sh- that shit's weird and that's what we're looking at right now it's not our good main, our main character and his love interest are sitting sideline in the arena <laughs> chilling for two episodes for two full episodes they're sitting in this arena i don't it's supposed to build tension is it building any tension for you not for me, nah. I, I, if 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 we being real, the only tension part was the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, because I felt like our main character wasn't going to reveal himself. Mm-mm. Like he just doesn't seem like that. That if he would have, if I would have liked him to, but if he would have, I would have called bullshit for them writing the character the way he has been written so yep. far already. Yep. And then deciding to step outside of his box. Um, yeah. And it's, so no. it wouldn't be him stepping out of his side of his box. It would be the re- the reason why he would step outside of his box is because his his partner. He's remember he was shot. He shot with the red arrow. So mm-hmm. when she well, said, "Not anymore. That's over." No, it's not. Yes, it is. No. Oh, they, yeah, you're right. Thirty three days has passed mm-hmm. since then. He was just standing with her. You're right. You're right. You're right as fuck. Yeah, but why did that red ring pop around his neck then? I'm assuming because he got mad and he's about he, to get active or something. That's what, okay. That's that's probably right. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I didn't feel any tension until the end. They already showed pretty much at the very last second of the episode that it's going to be somebody else that saves the girl instead. Um, another, uh, I guess, contestant is going to save her. They already showed him like basically the emotion of him. I don't think it's going to be our main guy. Gonna, our main guy is going to stand up, but sit his ass right back down. Mm-hmm. Because oh, plus, plus boy, yeah, because he doesn't have his super red red uh, ranger costume yet that they showed at the end uh, credits. So, yeah, I don't know. This show isn't as good. Call, that, call this dude a mighty morph from Power Ranger, though. They all are fucking. He about to, uh, yeah, yeah, it's morphing time. <laughs> straight up, <laughs> straight up. He about to turn into the Red Ranger soon, and it's gonna be uh, she wrote. But yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Oh, it's not. It's it's okay. I'm not gonna say it's not good because it's not bad. Nah, bro, this episode was not good. This episode was not good. Yes, yeah, I was speaking in general terms. Yeah, like that one episode where the angel we met last episode really kind of like swooped in. Mm-hmm. That shit was hard. I was like that that moment really like made that whole episode for me because mm-hmm. I was like, oh shit, something about to happen. And yeah. then kind of what what ended up happening was kind of like anticlimactic. Yep. And this entire episode that we just watched was very anticlimactic and they give us a, a semi like crescendo to a climax and I mm-hmm. bet you that bitch gonna be like anticlimactic <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's been right that's what it's yeah. been the entire it's been, show it's been set up after set up after set up for disappointment after disappointment after disappointment Agreed. Um, first episode is the best episode yes yes I had to think about it for a second yeah I agree <laughs> absolutely 
because it was so well written. It was, uh, it was more approachably chaotic. If that makes sense. Here, the the, the the information they gave us didn't seem. It seemed like decent information mm-hmm. with decent action in between, right? Like, and mm-hmm. I don't mean like I, I always explain this. I don't mean action in terms of like fighting or anything like that. I mean yeah. action in terms of progression in the story. Yes. So like when the director says action, we're not getting stagnant information. We're getting actual information, actual progression. Yes. So when they said action in that first episode, it was actually action. They're saying action in this most recent episode. And it's like, oh, look at what I can do. Yeah. It's a it's a dick swinging contest. <laughs> For no, and, and, uh, they no getting outswung too. Why, yeah. why, why are you just letting yourself get outswung? It, Stupid. Performing a different dick swing contest. This ain't, <laughs> this ain't the one for you. <laughs> Weirdly enough, for sure. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened or why it happened, but it's not looking good. Next up, though, eighty six. Uh, amazing episode. Fucking Fuck amazing it. episode. Hey, hey, listen, how Shin put up, pulled up on the, on the entire fucking platoon. Like, listen, this is, this is what's happening. Y'all going to listen to me. If y'all don't believe me, kill me. And guess what? He was right. He was right. And you know, the best part is that before they obviously didn't really like understand what he knew yep. uh, and why he knew it. And he didn't really give them much information, right? Like, he mm-hmm. just told them this is what's happening. This is just what it is. And his, we see them kind of get overtaken, overrun. Yep. And Shin and his platoon, or his boys and his girls, his people, they all were already pre-ready, pre-set, because they knew what was about to happen. Yep. They've been dealing with this for years now. So who's a, those are just other people in that, like, special training platoon that was with him yeah. when they pulled up? Okay. Yeah, because, you know, they're, they're supposed to be on call for deployment. They're not supposed to be already out on deployment. Right. They was, pre- they was like, all right, well, we're going to have to get out here and get active. And mm-hmm. they, they, they did way more work than anybody else. Yep. Like, but, the, what, the fact that they sent out, the fact that they sent out humans... In the first place to fight these legions are all is already ridiculous. Like that's just a measure of disaster, right? Like, no, I think reality is though, like they don't have nothing else, right? Like mm. the legion is their attempt at making something that is not human do it. I guess is what it no, almost feels like. No, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the Federacy. I mean, yeah, the Federacy. How they had yeah. those just regular ass people in those suits? Like, come on, man, you y'all know that ain't gonna work. They, yeah, they was getting murked out, bro. Oh, you talking about the the the, the, the soldiers? Army, yeah, bro. I'm like, come dumb. on, man, that <laughs> was saw, so stupid. As soon as I saw that one little laser go up in there and it broke off into like the little, little bombardment, <laughs> oh. I was like, bro, <laughs> listen, <laughs> that oh. was that was like stepping on ants, bro. Exactly. I'm like, Why what the fuck is them- going on here? Yeah. Like, y'all know what they can do. And but then I also think like that's the barricade to right before they get to the city. Right, right. So they could not get active. They had to get yeah. something out there to just lay down, cover fire or shots. But yeah. it was done instantaneously. Um, realistically, they they should have they shouldn't have done that. Yeah. That was a waste of people. It was a complete waste of people. But man, something about the way this episode was structured, perfect hills. Right, we just talked about this in Platinum Man with the hill being just whatever that bullshit was. This 86 hill, it was, you, you start emotional. You're know, like, I got to warn him. So it's, it starts at this flat crescendo. Then it shows the fucking legion. Somebody's, somebody, someone's commanding the legion. And once they start breaking off and going to literally every city with probably as many numbers as they, as they had ever seen. They're attacking the Federacy and the, the Republic. The Republic, the, re, the Federacy to the south, the north, all the sides, all of Everything. them. Everything. All of them. All directions they were attacking with full force. From that moment, the stress level, extremely fucking high. Extremely fucking high. Those soldiers just dying. So sad. Then it goes back to our people. And when Shin is talking to, uh, what's his name? I forget the other guy's name. But uh, I, I don't know. Raiden? Yeah, Raiden. I love him so much, too. I don't know why I couldn't remember his name. But when, they, when he's talking to him, he's like, look, I got I to gotta tell him. I don't give. It's no point in not hiding that a fact that I know that they're coming. And when he pulled up, my stress was so fucking high because I thought they were going to, like, arrest him or some shit. I didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. Right. Then when it happened and I saw those people die, I'm like, shit, man, this is too much. This is too much. And then 
our fucking crew comes in, the special forces unit come in, fucking shit up in that city, dude. And I'm I was blown back, man. I'm like, hell yeah. Like you said, the music, when the music crescendo to them coming in and everybody doing their specialties, like the sniper, the fucking, the maneuver dude, shin slicing people up, all of that shit was this, so fucking spe- well done, man. Yeah, this is probably my second favorite, like overall mech fighting animation in general, right? Absolutely. Like, this shit was on point. Yeah. And for, the for music to go first. with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've watched more mech anime than you. Excellent. But uh, for me, like, the the way that you incorporate the music into this and just the actual timing and pacing of everything because the music didn't just kick off and I said this earlier too. Yes. The music just kinda had a couple of like little pitches, a little high note here, and mm-hmm. then it went to that that you hit you can feel the drum, you can mm-hmm. feel it kinda pick up a little bit and it just kept going the entire time. Right. And like I remember I was watching everything and I got so zoned in that I felt yes. the music kinda like just go away. But then I was like, No wait, I need to hear that too. And it, it just kind of was like perfect. Everything was in sync. And this is, I got what like, this is when we talk about when sound design is so important that you, you kind of forget it's even there because you're just kind of engulfed in the entire situation because it's just so good. Um, they did they did this scene immaculately and perfectly. I think for overall like combat scene for mech, this is like my favorite combat scene ever. Mm. But I think in terms of like overall mech combination, like I said, combat is like my second. But this is amazing for like this is this is on point bro i it it was an intense moment like with very few words in all action and you felt how intense it was especially to fast forward just a little bit especially when yes when federico was sensing what was going on and shin was going off he was losing his mind oh literal goosebumps man the way he was fighting was incredible but i was like i'm like Come it's back, dangerous. yeah. I'm like, come back, man. Please come back. I do not want him. <laughs> call it. Let's call it madness because it, that's exactly essentially what it is. That's what happened to her night, and that's exactly what was about to happen to Shin, and she could feel it. And that shit was. I would not do the hair on my hands because I got hairy hands. Shout out to me being <laughs> fucking a part of a hairy family. <laughs> um, I ain't got no hair on my knuckles. All my shit was standing up, dude. My whole arm. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is happening to me? And just like you said. I was so zoned out. My peripheral was gone. I got three monitors. The motherfuckers were gone. The only thing I could focus on was what was happening right here on my monitor. I'm sitting here, just sitting here like this with my hands on my desk, so close to the monitor, getting blown back. When that glass go across his face and shit, I'm like, oh, yo, what the fuck? Is this liquid from the from the Legion about to seep in and turn him to? I don't even know what the fuck is happening because you just don't know in 86 until they explain it. But when he was going off, I'm like, shit. And then it ends. And you see the rain. I'm like, fuck, bro. This is too much, man. It's too fucking much. They they did give us closure at least though, bro. Yes. Like, they let us know that he didn't actually like get Lose hurt it. for real, Close. didn't die. Yeah. But but Federico was like, you know, you gotta stop fighting like this, bro. You got this to. is not this is not the move. Nope. Uh you're gonna be dead next time you do some shit like that. Cause like if when we see it, a piece of like cause the the tank or the, the legion he was fighting shot a shell through his machine (laughs) and that shrapnel is what cut him on his face like and obviously he shin so he knows you know he probably planned that because that's how he needed to get close he let that come through hit right there where he knew he was gonna take no actual like lethal damage yep and i'm like you can't be enjoying this like (sighs) he was having a fucking blast bro and i just feel like i feel like he's and this is what makes me think like he's recessing back into that whole uh, this is where we die at right on the mm-hmm. battlefield and that's cool uh i, to, I so think, sorry to cut you off real quick but it just reminded me the it's just so fucking beautiful the way the episode slowly peaked like it it slowly you had a peek into his uh descent into madness essentially right like because you saw him crack a smile when they were about to start fighting Everybody, and it turned like that grayish blue. Everybody ready up. When he told everybody ready up, it cracked that smile. Then when they all lined up, his smile got bigger. And then when we started fighting, his smile was a full blown fucking Joker grin, bro. Oh, uh, it was and it was throughout the entire episode. Well, not the entire episode because it was just another like kind of split joint. We're gonna mm-hmm. get to the split in a second. But that shit was special to me. So special to me that the way they did it. You, 
oh, so easy to miss that little shit. Mm-hmm. But it's no, so important that, to the show. That that grayish blue like tent, we mm-hmm. hadn't seen it other than when they showed his brother. Yes, like his his flashback on his brother and his brother having that same big ass demented crazy yep. smile. Yep. Um, and it, 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 you kind of feel bad, bro. It you just do. feels bad. You feel it in every sense of the word. You feel <laughs> it, bro. Oh man, you ah, oh, bro, so good, so fucking but that good. split, bro, that split, that split. We went back to the fucking captain finally. Let's go. I was like, oh shit, I forgot this. This had this good ass part of the show too. Blown back by that man. So her, her uncle, man. Yeah, she she having a talk with him, and she's like thinking, okay, well, he's not going to help me and he's just giving me support. He let me know what's about to happen. He picked up his gun, though, after that talk and was like, I'm, I can only hold you know, hold him off for so long, so do what you got to do. He was, just, he was just seeing if she had the resolve, and that's what I appreciated a lot. Mm-hmm. So a, I always thought he was a piece of shit. But, I, I mean, he still kind of is a piece of shit, but in a sense, it was like, it was a for her kind of thing. Right, like yeah, it was because he raised no, her, right? Yeah, but do you think what she said was wrong? Well, what he said was wrong when he oh, said yeah, no. it would be better for us to just die at their hands, right? Like I think uh, what he said about the eighty six turning on them yep. was wrong because I think that's just because he doesn't know them well enough. Yep. All he knows is that her parents died fighting with the eighty six. Yep. So to him, he's probably already got a little bit of grudge against him, but he knows that he can't hold her back because he couldn't hold her parents back either. Right. Yeah, it's something about that um <clears throat> that conversation that they had. I was I was stuck in between, like, what is he doing? You know, I, I had no idea what he was doing until he picked up that gun. The moment he mm-hmm. picked up that gun, I'm like, oh shit! And that's why she, just like her, when she saluted to him and said good luck to him, I'm like. Ah oh, fuck! Now I feel bad about hating his fucking guts during that entire conversation. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I had no, no, in, in, like no inclination of what the fuck he was going for when he was talking about this. I'm like, uh, yeah, I mean, like you're kind of right. The 86 ain't gonna fuck with you, but wait, you don't really know the 86 that well. So you're just saying it's what the 86 should do because of what they've done to them. Is all he was literally saying. Which is literally, special. literally, this is a talk about racism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's exactly to talk about racism, times, bro. It's the talk the about the entire racism. show. They yeah. not, they not, they just because like they don't actually have any ill intent for you, right? Like yep. they just want to live their life, and yeah, they may see that it would be easier to do everything by themselves. But they, who wants to live that kind of life where they nobody, do bro, by themselves, nobody, and everybody has even. Even if you are a loner, right? Like Polo and I, I think are very good loners. Like I, yes. we both enjoy our our free and alone time. Yes, but you still want to be accepted, a, mm-hmm. like a little bit by like <laughs> a few people. That's all you really care about is some acceptance. You don't need all acceptance. You don't need universal acceptance. You just need right. some to be happy and just be like, all right, I'm cool. I'm going by my day. Right. That's what these people want, and that's what he was kind of getting to the point of and trying yeah. to get that out of her. Now I also was like hype. As soon as she kind of goes in, she clicks her button, she turned on her little dial, and you see do 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 all the processors open up. Yep. And it said one hundred percent processors. I was like She connected bruh. to all of them. And what he means by that, he, he she's literally connected to every eighty six that there was. And telling her I like, look, this is it. This is it. So obviously this is all happening at the same time as what's going on with Shin. So beautiful way of telling it. They put the date there more than enough to for us to understand what, what was going on. But I will say this, Tell, and I'm going to ask you this question. Maybe you can help me answer it. Do you think that if you don't pay attention enough in this show that you will just be lost? Like, like you can miss some shit easily. So with that question, it's kind of hard, right? Because I think if you paying attention, if you pay a little bit of attention to this show, it gets too good to not pay attention. Mm. But Loaded if you question, just have it yeah, if you just have it on in like the background, then and you just kind of like look up and down. I don't even. Uh, so I like, find it. I find it hard to do even be that. And I'm, I mean, that just because we are into it, right? We're into that, it. Already, but that's so. with any show, though, right? I'm saying like if you, because to be honest, I feel like if you miss, if you don't understand what's going on in the first half of this season, that you will literally be so fucking confused. 
between like right. the, the splits. You know what I'm saying? Like the splits in general. The mm-hmm. way they do the splits, sometimes the split is literally going back in time. But if you miss that, you'll be confused. See what I'm saying? That's why yeah. I say, do you think it's easy to miss those? Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll say yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's easier to miss the extra information that makes this more amazing. I think if you don't pay 100% attention to it, it's just a really good anime. Right. But I think if you, if you pay attention to it when you get every single little hint they drop, then it's more than a really good anime. It's it's amazing. Almost fucking perfect to be honest. I'm not gonna hold you. Mm-hmm. We can guys see how this ending go. That's true. <laughs> That's true. We gotta, man. I'll hopefully, we get a conclusion. Twenty four is, I think, perfect. But to think about everything that just happened. Okay, let's fast forward to the very end credit scene where Federica said, "We get that where Shin get that flash of." Whatever the fuck that was that scared the shit out of me, that put my heart in my fucking asshole. Okay, I don't know if y'all know this, but I don't do like scary shit. I fucking hate scary shit. When that flash popped up and said, "I'm going to kill you," it fucking scared the shit out of me, bro. Like, what the I, I fuck? Th- I think that was uh, her, that, her old dude. That's her Kiri, night. Whatever his name is, Kiri. Yeah. Kiri. Yeah, that's her night, Kiri. But when that happened, it scared the fuck out of me. She said. Uh, Shin look out And Shin went over to Frederica To protect her At the very fucking end of it That shit blew me back bro I'm like what the fuck and Is going on That scene Plan them in That's how you do a cliffhanger bro yeah. The entire episode Gotta be good Sprinkle that goodness Into the episode yes. And then boom Cliffhanger with, Now we, we satisfied We ain't mad With proper closure To the episode And then do a cliffhanger You know what I'm saying Like that's what The difference is here The difference is the problem with Tokyo Revengers is the same thing. They never gave proper closure to an episode before they try to drop a cliffhanger. They just drop cliffhangers at very weird intervals. (laughs) Like, yeah, I don't don't need cliffhanger after cliffhanger after cliffhanger. That's it is a it is a plot element. It is a plot device. Yes. Not being utilized properly. Right. You gotta utilize all the other plot devices first before you start dropping cliffhangers. Now this though, here's this question for you. Do you think people binging Platinum Man will have a better experience than people watching week to week? No. I disagree. I do think they will. Because um, you, you don't think about cliffhangers. You don't think about it because you're just watching it. You're just watching it straight through. I hit myself no. with my microphone. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to think about the I'm going to think about the cliffhanger in between. You are. Montel I'm Williams talking, is. I'm, no, I'm talking about if I was binging it, I'm going to think about the cliffhanger still. Because yeah. why did it stop at the end of the episode right there? Even though I had the next episode to watch, right? Like, why did it stop right there? You will. And, and, and well, I'm saying like, I feel like a lot of these episodes are wasted time. And then the only interesting part is the cliffhanger. That's mm, not good. Okay. That's not good. You're talking the, about the meat in between the cliffhangers. Yeah, because I think about see. this, right? Think about this. You're listening to a Lil Wayne song, right? The beginning of Lil Wayne's song is kind of good. And then it goes and the whole song is like mediocre, right? Mm-hmm. And then it has this hard ass like transition into like this song. You're like, damn, well, who made this song? It's a Kanye West song. And then you got this dope ass transition from that back to a Lil Wayne song where it started off pretty good and then it go mediocre again. Mm-hmm. That transition is important. Mm-hmm. If you transition into the next episode, the next meat and potatoes, it's not good. So it's not I good. see what you so you're saying basically you're getting th- three minutes of goodness. Per episode, can you stop giving me three minutes of goodness? And then the meat of it, the main 20, 20 minutes is stop. just basic. I see what you're saying. Stop minute manning your anime. <laughs> Yo, we don't want it. Yo, yes, that is a fact. <laughs> Wait, is this is the name of this episode? Minute man, <laughs> minute man anime. Wait a minute, fuck. Could be. It could be, bro. Oh man, that's a good point. All right, because I'm like, I'm like at first, okay, maybe tell just just sitting in his podcast mindset about how you know we you know we are a little bit more critiquey when it comes to it. But somebody, a regular person, just watching it, binging it through, I do think they will still feel the same way, like you said, because the meat of it is just not there. Like it's a whole lot of fucking talking with not a lot of substance. Yeah, and it might get better later on, but right now fact. it's it's way too much like extra fluff for perspective oh what a transition we've talking about platinum in now uh for perspective there is we are on episode four right now so it could it's 24 episodes 
Damn, that's a lot of episodes. No wonder why you're dragging. It could shit. pick up and be fire. It could pick up and be fire. So just for timestamp reference, this episode comes out November second. So just for timestamp reference, we only watch four episodes. But right now, but it makes sense though. How the fuck are they gonna have this thirteen battle, thirteen member battle royale when they already took out five people? Four yeah, people? Are we gonna get a training arc in anime like this? Probably. I'm, I'm confused. Wait, how the fuck is this gonna work? Because they literally they in, in two episodes they literally took took out almost half the fucking people in this shit. Damn. Damn. They killed one in, in in what the first episode. Mm-hmm. Now they what killed two more. Yep. Possibly about to be three more. We we gonna see. We gonna see. That's wild, and it's only thirteen of them. So, yeah. Yikes. This shit might drag. I'm not gonna hold you. It might you drag. You see? You see why I'm coming around? I do. I do. I All right, it. bro. That's what I'm talking about. I get it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not too much. Do we already talk about Platinum Man? Yeah, we already yeah, did. We, we, we talk about Platinum Man first. Yeah, let's transition out of Platinum Man and out of 86. 86 being special to Jobless uh, Reincarnation. We're um, going to talk about uh, World's Finest Assassin. Oh, yeah, instead. Well, I guess both. I really want to talk about Jobless Reincarnation. Oh, no, that's what it was. It wasn't It wasn't World's Finest Assassin. It was supposed to be Jobless Reincarnation. So for Jobless, bro, I really do feel like that this episode was probably the best one this part two. No. Yeah, for for this season so far, this is definitely the best episode. Yeah, because um, I thought the season, and this is just my personal opinion, I thought the season was just okay so far. <sighs> this part, it, it, it's the information has been really good. Um, I think it's still above average, but I think a lot of stuff we're watching is above average. So to me, it just felt like it slid in very well. But this episode, contextually, story wise, character wise, that- everything. That is the key word right there. That's what still makes this part two for me personally so good because contextually with the way it was going, like the beginning of it, so it's still kind of like, still kind of super jolly. You know, we're just trying to find a way. Then you had that whole situation where you got caught by, you know, the, the captures or whatever the fuck, and that the slight sense, that slight sense of stress. But I think it was for the context for this particular episode. Mm-hmm. It was to give us this feeling like yo yeah rudy's been through a fucking lot yo chill but wait a minute so has everyone else yeah and i, rudy I think because i felt the same exact way you said like rudy has been through a lot mm-hmm. and for his dad to say like you just been having fun this entire fucking time i was like what wait what right <laughs> this is fun right he literally been kidnapped almost killed and multiple he, times he he tried to support the people he went and make sure they safe. Yep. You think you and I mean yeah, he having fun in between. Like this is not something that he necessarily gonna dread that he had in his life. But it's like this shit ain't, ain't been easy. No, it this ain't. Has been a, this has been work. It ain't been easy. But then again, we from viewers' perspective, we only seen what happened to Rudy. We had no fucking idea. If I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, tell maybe because you, your memory is a lot better than mine. Did Rudy cause this? He he used the 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 water storm spell. Remember the yes. really big water storm spell, and it was a mana issue because you remember that there was that uh that cast, thing. castle yeah. thing. Yeah. So when he cast that, it all kind of happened at once. I think I don't know if he necessarily caused it, but I think it was like a trigger, right? Yes. Like it was already so much mana in the air anyway that when he cast that spell, it was like boop, everybody. Yeah. I'm gonna send you this video. This is about this guy named. Uh, I f- Fuck, I can't remember his name. Somebody I'm subscribed to that does a breakdown of different like anime powers. He's does it so fucking well. I'm gonna send it to you. He explains uh Rudy's powers so well that that shit makes sense. And that's why I had to rethink about like, wait, he caused this whole shit in the first place, but I think you're right. I think it did trigger what then became of this because like you said, the man was gathering for such a long time. Even while he was growing up, we always noticed it up there, but we didn't know what the yeah. fuck it was. Because if you remember, they were talking about mm-hmm. the mana had been gaining for so much time, but yep. there's no, they don't understand why they don't understand where that building came from, anything like that. Right. So they, they already had no, idea. They, there was no real understanding. Right. And 
and like you said to go back to like the whole teleportation thing is that the way that the story was placed in front of us was that um, it was really just him and Aries. It and- was really just him. Yeah, we had no idea of the actual scale of it, right? Yep. And there was no reason for us to think of the actual scale. Nope. All we're, all we're worried about is what's in front of us is our main characters. And then we get to this point where we are in this episode and the scale is grand. <laughs> so it's grand. a large scale. Um, everyone is affected. Um, his he meets his dad um, and his dad's entire crew who are saving kidnapped people. <sighs> yep. Um, he, he finds out that his mom, his dad's second wife and his other sibling are missing. Mm. Um, he meets his other sibling Norm for the first time. Um, like since they, she's like cognizant now. Um, so the reality is, is that like the, the scale of what transpired is so much grander and larger than we expected. Right. And now that opened up the world for this to be like, well, what is the actual scale? Was it, it he said it was the city, right? The entire city. Yep. So that everybody in that city got displaced. Weren't there like kings and stuff in that city too? Absolutely. Like there was, and people died. We don't, everyone hasn't been located yet. So we don't know what the full, you know, the full consequences are of that right. action. Right. Yeah, man, it's just um, it was hard for me to catch like because, again, another one of the situations where I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, Paul, chill. He's a kid. He got teleported. He lived a fucked up, you know, few years during this thing. But then he said, yo, you literally chilling. We're trying to he, he thought I he like I thought you were doing the same thing uh, or something similar to what I'm doing. Like, I'm trying to fucking find our people and you're lollygagging around the fucking city trying to get back. You didn't write. He didn't write because they mentioned that earlier in the episode. Like, oh, I'm wondering what Paul's doing. I didn't write to him in so long. Blah blah. blah. Like, he didn't write. He didn't say anything to, to anybody about well, what the fuck was going on. Like, there was ways for you to contact, but you didn't try, and that blew me back. I'm like, fuck, man, this this man yeah. got a good point. But then again, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, but what do you fucking expect? He only knows what he knows. He doesn't know That's anything tr- else. That's true. But I, to Paul's defense. Rudy has never been so narrow minded in this series other than when he got teleported. When he got teleported, everything and they they did they did show that he has been very self centered this entire time mm-hmm. with how he handled Rudyard, how he handled uh Aries. uh what's her, Aries, uh because he was willing to sell the staff that she she got made for him. Mm-hmm. He was willing to do He's willing to lie for Ruger to get past that. His actions have been while they are to help the people immediately with him. Mm -hmm. They have not been for the greater overall like support of everyone. So his actions have been self-centered. I think they did a really good job of of showing that he has, he's not focusing on the things outside of what's directly around him. But how could he, that that made this very impactful to, to kind of get that explanation that boom, this is bigger than what you thought it was. But remember, this motherfucker was also in the eye of the storm from the center mm-hmm. of the creation. He has no idea. He didn't see it come from where it came from to his city and capture everybody. He was in the fucking middle of it. He was the people that. So all he knows is, oh, this just happened to me. You know what I'm saying? Like he he's it's just him. So, again, I don't I can't blame him, but I also can't. Like you said, can't blame Paul for the way he was speaking on it. But I can appreciate Rudy kicking his ass like yo I don't I didn't know pow you know what I'm saying like fuck yo, what the fuck you want what do you want from me first of all he was handing him them things bro. Man, shit was, it was crazy I and love seeing him right? so, like I knew Paul was good because when we first saw, saw Paul I thought he was that drunk like he was the drunk he yeah. was a drunk version of that dude that he fought um with the like animal north. people yeah, yeah so I thought north he was style. like that north north style dude yeah um but when we realized no this is Paul I was like, oh, yeah, blew me Ooh, back. This this daddy, he about to give you the hands. But I mean, we also see that his dad ain't no slouch. No, he never was. He never was the entire show. So, but yeah, but we never really see him go like we ain't seen him fight in a minute with his dad. That's true. And his dad never really went out like hard. Very true. Very good show, man. I think whew, I, it's so good. I think it's going to get even better next episode. I, I do I do foresee after this episode it getting more active mm-hmm. and 
I think story wise, this episode was imperative to get yes. the next level in this story. It was imperative, uh, yes, because it was imperative to ma- of making everything else seemed viable, right? Like his chillingness, you know, him relaxing and having fun in his village after after some bullshit happens, and then you chilling and you move on. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mm-hmm. making that more viable for me too. All right, is that it? That's it. That's a wrap. All right. We just finished talking about Jobless Reincarnation. What did you think about this latest episode? How good was it? Uh, I like how they kind of brought in the scales on that. We also talked about 86 and one the best mech anime I've ever watched, for sure. Um, yes, love. We also, we also talk about the Minuteman anime, Planet End, Platinum End. <laughs> I'm ready for that to end. Uh, we also have Teflon Sega Paralyzed. Great song for the break. Let us know what you think about that Teflon Sega joint. And then before that, we got to know Mike Check Waifu Waifu with the favorite game as a child. We we did before middle school, but let us know what, what was your favorite game as a child. You can give us anything. We also had our must watch and our must not watches. Uh, you know, let us know what your must watches are for the season or even for the year. Just let us know what you think for the best for the year. What what should we watch and what should we avoid? Um, Will we record in person? Of course. We're going to get to it eventually. We didn't know we're just going to make the right time for it. And then episode of the week for both of us was 86, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then we also got a chance to listen to Polo's great story about Houston, loud cars, and country music. And that's been episode 124 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. I'm at Polo Born Fly on all social media. I'm at King Teliano on all social media. You can follow our social medias at Mike Check Waifu on Twitter and at Mike Check Waifu Waifu on Instagram. And as always, Mike, Mike, Mike Check, 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 check. Yo, Polo said, I am not fucking with that country music, bro. Never. <laughs> <laughs>